everyone, I'm Dr. Elena Gross, the neuroscientist, PhD in clinical research, founder of KetoSwiss. The fourth pillar comes in place when all of the other three pillars haven't worked when trying to master your migraine. It really is about giving the brain or providing the brain with an alternative fuel source to glucose and or lactate. And this is where ketone bodies come into the picture, either endogenous or exogenous. And we'll go quickly over what does that mean and how you can achieve getting into ketosis to provide your brain with an alternative energy substrate. In some patients with compromised energy metabolism, this is really what they need. They will not be doing well enough with all of the other approaches before. It really needs the energy source that it is genetically predisposed to use the most efficient. How do we get into a state of ketosis to provide these brains with the adequate energy source? Now, the first way is that of a ketogenic diet, which you've probably heard quite a few times already. A ketogenic diet basically is a fasting mimicking diet. We're trying to mimic the state of starvation or fasting so that the body doesn't know whether the increased fatty acids are coming from inside its own fat tissues as it would during starvation or fasting, or whether the fatty acids are coming from outside. It turns on very similar machineries and will start making ketone bodies primarily in the liver once glycogen, so glucose storage is, are, is deprived, insulin is low, there's only moderate amounts of protein and increased fatty acids around. First things first, all ketogenic diets that I recommend have a large number of things in common. Firstly, real food, organic and local where possible. I cannot stress this enough, is no good to replace a highly processed carb diet with a highly processed ketogenic diet. That doesn't get you anywhere. Second, enough electrolytes and minerals, important to drink the right water and drink electrolytes and get adequate amounts of minerals. When you lose glycogen, glucose storage, quite large number of minerals are flushed out with the water that you are losing because glycogen is bound. There are all high carb foods that includes grains, sugar, potato, rice, biscuits, high sugar fruits and starchy vegetables, at least to begin with until you can find your own balance and your carb allowance or your own ability to metabolize carbohydrates. I would go between 20 to 50 grams of healthy carbs, which come from vegetables, some dairy if you tolerate it, and low carb food to begin with. Eat moderate amount of protein. Now this is a very big controversy. What does moderate amount of protein mean? To make a complicated story short, you will probably fall on the continuum between one gram to two grams of protein per lean kilogram of body mass. And where you are on that spectrum, you have to experiment yourself. All right, so lastly then, also two more things, uh, reducing omega-6 fatty acids while increasing omega-3 fatty acids. Omega-6 are more pro-inflammatory, omega-3s are more anti-inflammatory, that's something you really want. You need omega-6 as well, but with all the nuts that we're eating and uh, all the vegetable oils, you usually get too many omega-6. So I typically recommend getting rid of vegetable oils and uh, apart from olive oil and just focusing on a high quality algae based omega-3 supplement that you can take in addition because too much fish has too many heavy metals and can also not be tolerated by all migrants. And lastly, reduce free radicals. You can do this by not frying unsaturated fats. Anything that is liquid probably shouldn't be heated. Better fry with ghee, butter, lard, tallow. Those will not produce free radicals when you heat them. And olive oil can be heated but shouldn't be fried. And then also um, get high quality cooking equipment and also get rid of your cast iron pan because that is making free radicals via free iron, which is one of my personal most potent migraine trigger. Okay, just a really quick recap. What is a ketogenic diet? It's typically 70 to 80% of your calories coming from fat, about 5% of your calories coming from carbohydrates, and between 15 to 20% of your calories coming from protein. Now, lastly, I want to finish this section by going into the different forms of a ketogenic diet. There are a couple that I am recommending. One is the paleolithic ketogenic diet, a bit like the paleo diet. It would only include foods that our caveman ancestors would have eaten, Obviously, those vegetables and fruit today may not resemble anything of like the vegetable that we were eating back then. So it's an approximation, but you get the idea. You would not be eating cheeses 
dairy, you would not be having coffee, tea or red wine in that version of a ketogenic diet. The Mediterranean ketogenic diet is a bit more liberal and it mimics the Mediterranean diet minus the grains um, and, uh, and the starches. So here you would have olives, small fish, meat, you would have dairy, especially when it comes from goats. You would have yogurt, so dairy products are totally allowed, veggies and fruit as in, in the paleo diet, but also red wine within reason. And tea and coffees and low-carb beverages are allowed here as well. And there is a stronger focus on omega-3 fatty acids. Now, lastly, I want to finish with by saying that especially women, when being on a very low ketogenic diet, uh, for a longer time can have some problems, including myself with lower thyroid function, hormones might go whack, cortisol may rise, it may be a bit stressful, especially during some parts of your cycle. So a very strict long-term ketogenic diet um, for a woman may not be the best solution, which is where the cyclical ketogenic diet comes into the picture. A cyclical ketogenic diet can have various forms. One of them is a seasonal cyclical, cyclical ketogenic diet, which is mimicking most of what our ancestors may have done. So that would basically be be ketogenic in the autumn and winter months when there was no carbohydrates around in the area that you were living and enjoying more carbohydrates and fruits during the summer months when there would be naturally more carbohydrates or fruits available. Now, the other thing is you could also have a carb up meal on a regular basis. This could be once a week, every second day, or every day that you have one meal a day that has more carbohydrates. And some people will even be back in ketosis the next day. So you could have a sweet potato or a couple of fruits at dinner, for example, and this would still be considered a somewhat cyclical ketogenic diet. Last category of ketogenic diets is that of a more recent phenomenon called the carnivore diet. And as the name suggests, this really is a diet that is zero carb more or less and 100% animal foods. And depending on how strict you do it, it is either just meat or meat products. This includes bone and its intestines and salt and water. That's the most strictest form. Other forms allow eggs, some fish, maybe even some dairy. This sounds very drastic, but there is literature to suggest that you can do this. If you do eat the intestines, you get all the minerals and vitamins that you need, um, all the amino acids and fatty acids. So you can do this for a prolonged period of time without getting sick, at least in some people, may not be the most palatable, but it also is the best elimination diet. So if somebody's really struggling with plant toxins, compounds, and really has a lot of allergies and food intolerances and doesn't know where it's coming from, going on a carnivore diet, which most people are not intolerant to meat and fats can actually help you figure out if it's something in your diet that is causing your symptoms. So then you go on a maybe a four or six week carnivore diet and then slowly reintroduce those foods that may have been troubling you before. It can also put you in ketosis, but a carnivore diet typically is not as ketogenic because protein levels will be higher. There's also one last way how you can get or provide your brain with an alternative fuel source to glucose and lactate, and that is that of your microbiota. The inhabitants of your gut, you may have heard of the microbiome before, it's actually trillions of microorganisms that inhabit your gut. And some of the things they do is they play a role in immune function, they synthesize some of the vitamins, some amino acids, some of these essential micronutrients that we've talked about before. So getting your gut healthy also helps with the micronutrient deficiencies that you may encounter. But very importantly, they can break down some of the insoluble and soluble fibers that you have resistant starches that you will have when you eat a ketogenic diet and thereby produce a short chain fatty acid called butyrate. And this may have properties anti-inflammatory, may be able to feed the brain in a very similar way to beta hydroxybutyrate. So getting your gut health in order with fermented foods, with kombucha, with maybe dairy and yogurt if you tolerate it, but also cleaning up your diet maybe a good way to provide your brain with another energy source. And we talked about butyrate for your gut. We talked about ketogenic diets, which mean that your liver endogenously is making that alternative fuel source for your brain. But there's also a shortcut or a little hack that you can do to quickly get your, supply your brain with an alternative energy source. It's actually that of exogenous ketone bodies. And we've mentioned these before. These could come from middle chain triglycerides, MCT oils, C8 or C10 chain length, 
that can be added to your salads, your coffee in the morning, your uh, soup, your milkshake, your yogurt, whatever you want. Now, the second one that I would recommend in that way is uh, our ketone body mineral salts, especially the DPHP, the human identical version, can be put into well tasting drinks including as many minerals as possible, not overdosing, but these can even be given on top of a ketogenic diet or a low GI diet to get your levels high enough to be in therapeutic ranges, especially if your liver is a bit sluggish. So in this four pillar model of mastering migraines, we have gone through the four major ways how energy metabolism can be improved in the migraine patient. Starting off with stabilizing blood glucose via various ways, such as low GI diet, controlling your stress levels, adrenaline, cortisol, and so on. Moving on to decreasing oxidative stress and increasing endogenous antioxidant capacity via various different ways. Third pillar being increasing micronutrients, which are as important as macronutrients when it comes to mitochondrial functioning and energy metabolism. And if those are not enough, the fourth pillar really is supplying the brain with an alternative, reliable energy source. I really hope that some of this has inspired you to adopt some change, to try this out for yourself. Please leave some comments. We're looking forward to hear which of the pillars has helped you the most, if any, and which have not, and why, and what was particularly helpful or particularly difficult, where you may have some more questions or may require some more information. And with that, I really hope that you can master your migraine. Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Elena Gross, a neuroscientist, PhD in clinical research, founder of Keto Swiss.